My Sam, are you ready to give up who you once thought you were? Ready to sacrifice everything you held close? Are you ready to leave your life behind and walk the path of shadows? We know that you've been dying to find out what's next for Assassin's Creed. It's time for a trailer. Yes! I'm so excited and I'm so happy. It's time to discover what we've been crafting in the shadows. There is a lot to look forward to in Assassin's Creed Mirage. This can't come soon enough. Ah, oh, chills. Oh my God, this looks so good. Now this is Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed Mirage is a very special game, designed as a homage to the first titles of the series that many of us fell in love with. And from the light, you will return to the dark. <gasps> Yo, bro. <laughs> from this day forward, you are a hidden one. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Assassin's Creed Mirage launch live stream. We are so close to the launch of Assassin's Creed Mirage, and to celebrate, we have an amazing show for you. We'll be taking a behind the scenes look at how Assassin's Creed Mirage is a return to the roots for the AC franchise, as we're joined by the development team, deep diving into the music and authenticity of the game, showing off that sweet collector's case, and even talking to the stars of the game, Shorey Agdashlu and Lee Majdub. We've also stashed away a few Assassin's Creed Mirage collector's cases that we'll be giving away later on in the stream. And once we wrap up here, don't go anywhere because we'll be ending the stream with our first ever look at live gameplay for Assassin's Creed Mirage. Of course, you don't get to launch date without all of the talented developers at Ubisoft Studios around the world, including Ubisoft Montreal, Quebec, Belgrade, Montpellier, Sofia, Bucharest, Craiova, Kyiv, Odessa, Shanghai, Singapore, Philippines, and of course, our lead studio, Ubisoft Bordeaux. In fact, we paid a visit to Bordeaux to learn a bit more about what parts of Mirage the development team is most proud of. Check it out. My name is Simon Arcelo, a World and Quest director, what is otherwise called level design. We work on the creation of the playground for the player, uh, defining the landmarks, the variation of density or scale, so the experiences would be fun, even outside of narrative or story context. On the quest side, we work more on the player's journey, all to create a roller coaster of moments of tension and adrenaline, as well as discoveries and surprises. I'm proud of all the small inspirations, gameplay elements, and nostalgic feelings we're able to bring back into the game. I'm especially happy to put our own spin on tailing and disguise gameplay moments. Before we decided to set the game in Baghdad, I remember looking at historian maps and drawings of the round city and thinking, Damn, this is an awesome city. It looks iconic, it looks fantastic. We have to pick it. It's going to be perfect for the game. And I'm glad we've been able to bring it to life with the right attention to detail it needed. I hope the players will have as much fun playing it as we had creating it. I'm Annika. I'm a character concept artist. After reading a character's backstory, my job is to design them and the clothes they're going to use, as well as the tools, instruments and weapons. In AC Mirage, I created the main and supporting characters, as well as Basim's and his Igor and Kidu's cosmetic skins. Two years ago, I was still a student and this is my first job in the industry. If I had to choose one single thing that I'm most proud of, it would be my first important mission, that was designing Basim's hidden blade. I knew it was right when the artistic and technical part came together and really fit Basim. I'm Marco and I'm a senior game designer. As game designers, we basically uh, shape the core experience of the game. So we design player abilities, the way the enemies behave and the uh, obstacles that you have to overcome in the game. Personally, I worked on polishing the stealth gameplay. That means basically working on the AIs, the way they can attack the player, how they react to their environment, how they investigate intruders. We wanted to push the stealth quality bar as high as we could, 
and to me it just felt great to have that kind of latitude. I was just blown away by the amount of love and anticipation people have shown for Mirage. I think the message really got through on how much this game is a love letter to the past AC games. I'm so glad people are just getting to play it. I know I have been waiting for a game like this for a while. My name is Salome Strapazon. I am Associate Art Director on Assassin's Creed Mirage in Ubisoft Bordeaux. My role was mostly to design the ambience, the feel and the crowd life for the different districts of Baghdad. We created different lighting ambiences and different environmental visual effects to re reinforce the variety and the liveliness of Baghdad. We also worked on the crowd for the city to uh, represent the different thematic and different environment of the city. We had to pay attention to a lot of details, you know, of like the ethnicities, the clothing, the languages, and of course the activities of the crowd. We also give a good representation for children, women, and elderly uh, across the game. So it was very exciting, you know, to, to recreate Baghdad. I'm Stéphane Boudon. I am the creative director on uh, Assassin's Creed Mirage, and I'm in charge of creating and communicating the global vision of the project, defining the core pillar of the game and its player experience. I also support my fellow directors and ensure the game is as high quality as possible. So during the development, I suddenly realized that uh, some of the hidden ones you encounter in Alamut didn't have their ring finger cut. I raised the issue to the character team, they fixed it right away. And now every initiate in the game has their uh, ring finger properly cut. It's a tiny but important detail for the most keen eyed players. The thing I am the most proud of is the team spirit we succeed to create on Mirage. We overcame many challenges. It helped us to get to know each other better and made us stronger as a team. I'm Fabien Salomon. I'm lead producer on AC Mirage. I'm in charge of managing and supporting the production team. That means supervising the resources, the quality and timing of the project overall. I'm also the main point of contact of all internal and external partners of the production teams including our supporting studios. I'm proud to be part of the first French studio to ship an Assassin's Creed game, especially one dedicated to the history of the franchise with a back to the roots flavor. I feel very lucky to be part of this human adventure. I'm so proud of the Bordeaux teams and so grateful to all our codev partners who did an amazing job on this project. Hello everyone, it's One Republic. We're glad to be a part of this brand new Assassin's Creed song and video game. We had a ton of fun working on it. It's our latest single, Mirage, featuring Michelle Tamer. We hope you'll enjoy the game as much as we did. We're obsessed with Assassin's Creed. This is a dream come true. Right from the start, knowing the intentions of the game, we knew we wanted to have a blend between electronic music and traditional instruments from the regions where the game takes place. It was a way to pay homage to the original game launched 15 years ago. 
Witch Like Mirage, Fantasy Sound Stealth, Parkour and Assassination and Featured Electronic Sounds and Music. We also wanted to add a touch of modernity to support Mirage Story and Gameplay. The music and the sound are based on Basim's point of view. We wanted to represent the introspective mentality of our main character. Electronic tunes bring almost a mantra, a repetitive side that immerses us in Basim's state of mind. During his journey, Basim evolves between light and darkness. His musical theme is a strong mix between poetic melodies and more aggressive and dark notes. Brendan was on my composer watch list for a while, so when he came to find the perfect composer for IC Mirage, it was a no-brainer for me to introduce him to the team. Brandon had the perfect balance of electronic elements in his music combined with acoustic instrumentation that is uh, relevant for the region where this journey happens. From the start, we wanted to work closely with musicians who have an extensive knowledge of this musical culture. Brandon knows how to surround himself with talented people capable of bringing us this authenticity. Musicians, singers, orchestrators, we wanted to hire actual performers who get the Arabic finesse and ornamentation. One of the conversations we did have uh, was just about how vibrant Baghdad was at that time and how much culture was moving through there, how much rich diversity and the commerce and just people moving through there. Um, so that was definitely one of the jumping off points of inspiration. One of my fondest memories is when Etienne made me listen to the audio track from one of the key scenes. I felt as if the scene was complete for the first time. Mirage soundtrack supports the story and characters in a way that I could never have imagined. And I hope players will enjoy it as much as I do. We just got an inside look at the people and music behind Assassin's Creed Mirage before it takes the series back to the roots. But it's not the only Assassin's Creed game releasing this year, nor the only one paying homage to the series' history. Assassin's Creed Nexus is the first Assassin's Creed VR game. It'll let you explore Renaissance Italy, revolutionary America, and ancient Greece as Ezio, Connor, and Cassandra when it launches on November 16th. Here's creative director David Votipka to tell you more. If there's one thing I'd like players to know about Nexus, is that this isn't a small VR experience that lasts but a few hours. This is a full, proper AC game, where you get to play three different assassins across three different time periods, and it's all wrapped up together in a brand new Assassin's Creed story. And the way it works, really, is that the modern-day story is kind of the, the wrapper for this. The idea is that you're an elite player hacker that has been, that is undercover for the Brotherhood and is now working for Abstergo. Dominica Wilk is the main character from Abstergo who has you jumping through memories of three different assassins who have, at some point in their lives, encountered these artifacts that Abstergo is looking for. When you boil down kind of to the three key pillars of Assassin's Creed and what we focused on in Nexus, stealth being number one, is really going back to, to the basics and the roots and to allow players to experience that in VR. So that was the top pillar for us. The second one is exploration slash navigation. So that's a, a mix of being able to climb and parkour and run all over the rooftops of all these environments, um, but also to get the sense of being in that environment, right, in the historical place. And then the third one is combat. So from single enemies to multiple enemies and fighting like an assassin with all those key iconic weapons. So the dream of Nexus really is to fundamentally allow players to become a master assassin with these three different settings and these three different beloved characters. Folks, this is a very exciting time for me. I'm joined by the stars of Assassin's Creed Mirage and the voices of Basim and Roshan, Lee Majdoub and Shorey Agdashlu, as well as Sarah Bolio, the narrative director of Assassin's Creed Mirage. Now, I know Assassin's Creed fans were thrilled at the announcement of your casting. So I, I have to ask, and Lee, let's start with you. How were you first approached about this role and what was your familiarity with Assassin's Creed? Well, I mean, my familiarity, I'm, I'm, I'm very familiar. I'm a big gamer, uh, you know, played one, two, Brotherhood. And I remember being pulled into Assassin's Creed one, especially, you know, being in the Middle East and being a Middle Eastern person and, uh, 
Yeah, so really cool. Uh, as far as like how it came about, I was I was asked to read for it, and then through that process, met the team, um, and kind of discussed the the whole journey and what they were going for. And I was I was really excited from the very beginning, just to like it is pretty you know, exciting. Assassin's Creed, like I don't know, yeah. it is, really cool. It is yeah. after all Assassin's Creed. Of yeah. course, I was I was familiar with it, mm. but I didn't know it as much as I. I'm familiar with it today. Right. Well, we wanted you, Shuri, uh, as the voice of Roshan very early on. That was something we couldn't miss. Um, so when you said yes, I think the whole team was was thrilled. And and hearing you the first time as Roshan was very powerful for us all, for sure. And I remember our first meeting talking about the the pod and how mu you know much research researches you did before and and how close you were to the character and how you know how passionate you were about about that it was very uh, heartwarming for us <gasps> and and as for lee well he knows uh, that he brought something uh, to the character that i i wished he would which is the the light that we wanted for basim basim is a character from valhalla people may know him for his you know um dark path in valhalla but what we needed is is someone who could bring the the, the kindness and the light of the uh, early Basim, you know, from the beginning of the game until the end. And he brought that and he brought his um, his kindness. Yes, that's that's not a bad word, actually. Okay. That's a, yeah, that's a great one. Kindness is the right word, you're yes, right, for exactly. Basim. Yes, exactly. it's the eyes. No matter how tough. <laughs> yes, it's the eyes. Yeah, it's, it's, exactly. the big, yeah, it's the big, <laughs> yes. yeah, it's the eyes that I have. <laughs> oh, mm, yes. yeah, it really sucks people yeah, in. Yeah, the headlight. <laughs> you take a compliment, like, no problem. Yeah, right. right. I love it. I love Thank it. you, yes, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Shorey, I want to ask you too. What does it mean to you to depict a character like Roshan in a setting like 9th century Baghdad? I'm going to ask you a question. Who doesn't want, what kind of an actress does not want to lend her voice to a courageous woman who stands up for justice? <laughs> Obviously, I was so <laughs> proud. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you for having me in this game. You know, at the end of the day, us actors, mm -hmm. we're storytellers. The story needs to connect to us. We need to feel like relative. And therefore, so we, we, we can realize that we can do a good job. And when I first read the story, I fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing, amazing story. Thank you. Well, where rarely do you see like a, a strong Middle Eastern mm -hmm. woman of a older age, yes. you know, be kind, like the guiding light yes. in a story. Yeah. I, I fell in love. As soon as I heard your voice, as soon as I heard your name was attached, I was like, okay, yeah, 100%, <laughs> good job. And then I heard your voice for the first time, and I was Thank like, oh. and they like it just so, so your strong. voice in the studio. And you were like, no, I, I don't like it. <laughs> and, and I was like, that sounds like Bassem. It is Bassem. The day is new. There is work to be done. Durwish has left another contract. Who for? Your voice changes right mm -hmm. throughout the, the course of the story Lee. yeah 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 i mean that was a that was a discussion with the team we had this this conversation and i and i had this idea of like well what if his voice also evolves as he evolves through you know from starting out as a thief and, and he's a little bit more cocksure and arrogant and and mm -hmm. has a little bit more of that smirk on his face so finding a lighter register because he's in a lighter like time in his life mm -hmm. you need something stolen i am your man Durwish can attest. And then as he goes through a little bit more trauma and, and seeking out the hidden ones and joining the hidden ones, his experience kind of informs his, like the depth in his voice, the way he breathes changes and his efforts when he climbs change. You are here in body, but are you here in mind and soul? You know, Roshan as a, a more mature character of Persian origin was someone that really resonated with you. Do you find parts of yourself in her character? Oh my God, of course, we have a lot in common okay. with Roshan. I never forget this. When I received the script and I started reading it, I noticed that uh, th there's a line about Roshan that says, Roshan uh, is a representative of justice, uh, diversities, uh, ethnicities, and cultures. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, my God, of course, this is right up my alley. I can, I may be able to do a good job with this one because I can identify with this female warrior a lot. I've, 
I myself have gone through a lot and uh, have been trying very hard to bring justice into this, to our world, in, to our communities. And now I am portraying a woman. I'm lending my voice to a female warrior. You know, when, when women are at work and uh, are, courageous, are, are courageous enough to stand for their basic rights, and uh, fight for justice, how delicious that is. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and, and Lee, you were mentioning too, you found a personal connection to Bassam as well, right? Yeah, I mean, it, like there's so many, like my journey with regards to like when Mirage came into my life, um, Bassam's story with regards to, you know, seeking out like where does he belong in the world? He knows he's meant for something better. Uh, he's dealing with his own demons. Uh, he's suffering from nightmares. Um, you know, is it is it sleep paralysis? Is it mental health? Is it anxiety? Like all, all of these things. And, you know, Middle Eastern, Arabic speaking. And I remember like a, a part of my life, like in my late teens and early to mid twenties, I, I, I struggled a lot with like my identity around being a Middle Eastern person, male. Uh, with regards to prejudices and everything. So I kind of shunned that part of my life for a very long time and that identity. Didn't want to speak the language anymore. Didn't want to tell people I was Lebanese. Didn't want to tell them I was Middle Eastern. And so a big part of like finding myself again has been finding that love mm -hmm. of the history and where I come from. And I remember about seven months before Mirage came, I reached out to my mom. And I was like, Mama, I... I want to learn the language again. Mm -hmm. And so we just started spending like three, four days a week. She would send me some Arabic. She's like, try to figure it out. We'll figure it out together. And um, seven months into doing that, Mirage comes across and they're like, one of the questions is, can you speak Arabic? Wow. And I was like, I can't, I can read, I can speak, I can, you know, and then you know, mom was involved too with like, helping me kind of decipher some of the language as well, because context was everything and it's old Arabic, which is very different from like the Lebanese dialect. Um, but yeah, so it came at a time in my life where it was like, you know, refinding like that identity that, you know, I loved when I was a child mm. and then grew to have resentment and, and self-loathing around a little bit and now finding that love again and being able to voice this guy that's trying to find that it was really, really, really cool. And to embrace your heritage. That's the thing too. I mean, <laughs> yes. this, this whole oh, game is about- me, did that's, it for me, That's this whole I game. I be proud of my heritage. Of course. Yeah. It's an, it, it does embrace, it embraces the whole history of the Middle East that I think a lot of us don't know about. Like I didn't know that Baghdad was such a hub, mm -hmm. especially in the ninth century. And it was like multicultural mm -hmm. and multilingual and multi-religious and, and collaborative and trade and like, I was like, oh, no wonder, like my genealogy is so mixed. <laughs> like, you know, historic, like we're all from everywhere, yeah. especially in that area. And I was like, right. Could listen to these two talk about their characters <laughs> yeah, me all too. day. Like, yeah. <laughs> but I, I have a little final question for you because yeah. obviously you wrote the characters of Bassam and Roshan before you cast Lee and Shorey. How did they evolve as characters after the casting and after the performances came through? Everybody, and, and, and myself included, put something into Basim that is very personal to us. Um, whether it's the trauma, whether it's the sleep paralysis, or you know, uh, different stuff on his outfit, for example. But the fact that you found something, you brought something that was personal to you, and it was reassuring seeing seeing you, um, you know, being so um, so invested in the character. Because we always fear that what 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 we write is too personal, so that people won't connect with it. Mm -hmm. Because that's too. But what we tell when we tell stories, we tell something about universal feelings, what it is to be a human, and and the fact that you brought that and you were so so into it right away, <laughs> it was very reassuring, and it helps us what writing you know furthermore about the character so yeah you brought that you brought your light and everything and that was that was amazing and and about you shori i mean what can i say it's it's sure it was like yeah you you brought <laughs> you obviously your your voice has a uh, natural 
power. So when you when you when you did the first lines in the recording uh, session, I remember everyone was, you know, we we were impressed, and huh. it, you brought the charisma obviously to the character right away. I mean, just with your voice, which is you know amazing to watch and to witness, and and it's really much like a. Um, you know, like a like a Frankenstein movie when you hear the the, <laughs> the actors, you know, saying the line for for the first time, it's like okay, it's alive. Right. <laughs> the character That's... is alive. You know, it's um and and it's always powerful as a moment for for us as uh, you know writers, narrative designers, whatever voice designers. Everybody was yeah, was amazed. Are you ready to leave your life behind? About your voice. I mean, I remember seeing the trailer reveal when you say my name what's my name basem ibne ishaq like <laughs> like i remember I chills. Chills. I chills. Chills. Dude, hearing that, that like i'm i've heard her voice you know as we're recording and everything <laughs> but that trailer reveal with that opening <laughs> i immediately was like, like just in hearing that i was like okay this this woman this character has gone through a lot. Yes. And is coming through a lot of experience. Like you hear that. You hear Just that. in those three exactly. words, she's saying Bessem's name. Yes. And already you know it's coming from someone that is a master. I don't know what the point of me saying that is. It's just like to, to say that like you hear that and you feel, at least I felt it immediately without needing to know much about anything about the character. I was like, All right, I get it. The minute Roshan sees Bessem, she knows that Bessem has all the characteristics, all those ingredients to become an amazing hidden one who can stand for justice. And obviously this woman who's been through a lot, as you were mentioning rightfully, uh, has gained lots of experience that has led her to become wise, pretty wise. And she's looking for the right person, the next keen or mm. you know, that she can just relay whatever she's learned Pass the torch. throughout her life, relay to this young man and so the saga can continue. Mm -hmm. You it's, have me way more excited than I was even at the beginning of the interview to play this game. <laughs> We've done so, our job. Shorey Lee, Sarah, thank <laughs> you, you, thank you thank so much. Thank, thank you. you so much yeah. and a huge thank you to Ubisoft. Yeah, of course, 100%. Thank you to YouTube thank you. for bringing so much to the project. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. For being magical. <laughs> so exciting. So exciting. I'm so excited. Just as a fan, too, I'm just like, I can't wait. I can't <laughs> yeah, right. wait to play this October game. 5th can't come soon. I, can't. I know, I know. It's got to happen. It's going to happen soon. It's uh, going to happen soon. Yes. Soon. I'm okay. I can breathe. How many hours do we do we have? <laughs> we're counting down for sure. Yes. We're counting down for sure. Yes. Uh, but next up, we're going to take a look at the stunning creation of the Assassin's Creed Mirage Crest and an inside look at how the team at Ubisoft Bordeaux is making the most authentic game as possible. Being an expert in Islamic arts and a fan myself, it was my chance to leave a unique mark on the game. Inspired by some old Abbasid manuscript, it became clear that the style needed a modern twist. It was like fitting a puzzle with some weird pieces, and it took many trials until we arrived to the ideal crest. Eventually, the translation of the hidden one, which is al makhfi emerged as a winner. For the first time, the crest carries a deeper meaning beyond the fantasy setting. Arabic calligraphy and the Arabic language owe their uniqueness and continuity to Islamic civilization. In their reverence for Quran, Arabs developed a lot of writing tools and forms, which led early Muslim artists to stay away from symbols and focus on calligraphy to avoid confusion. While other styles of decoration emerged later, Arabic calligraphy remained the primary and the most expressive element of Islamic art. The development team provided specific texts, which were parts of old poems dating back to the Abbasid era, except for the eagle, in which the famous motto was written, then out of the dark, you will come into the light. It was a fascinating exercise in weaving poetry into gameplay, and it was all about striking the balance between history and modernity. In terms of authenticity, the team went above and beyond to ensure many aspects are authentic. 
for language, for example, they ensured the correct pronunciation of Arabic words and names and expressions based on recordings I provided to them. Even the names of the members of the Order of the, Order of the Ancients are based on uh, Arabic and Farsi and legends and myths. Al Ghul sends orders to the prison guards. Another example is the Adhan, or the call to prayer, and how it was beautifully recorded by a Mu'addin in, in a recording booth. Our sincerest thanks to him. The team also consulted with historians, historical experts, and artists to ensure authenticity in, in not just language, but also religion and art and culture. Uh, working with the production team was and is an experience I will not forget. Usually, uh, my involvement with any project is tied to localization and age rating, but this time around, I was involved from the very beginning and consulted on multiple topics from religion and culture to poetry and art. The decision to fully localize the game in Arabic was welcomed by the team. Basim, as it would add an extra layer of immersion and authenticity, not just for Arabic players, to, so they can hear uh, their native tongue spoken correctly and accurately, but also for non-Arabic players uh, to immerse themselves in the world uh, of Assassin's Creed Mirage. A lot of things that we know in modern day science, physics, mathematics, philosophy is built on top of what we've learned from the Abbasid era. Unfortunately, not a lot of people know about this um, for varying reasons and, and we're hoping that this game will spark their curiosity. We hope this will introduce many people to what the Arab world really looked like and as an Arab I'm really filled with joy and pride to be a part of this project and cannot wait to see everyone's reactions. Now, in just a few moments, Shorey and Lee will be joined by art director Jean-Luc Sala to unbox the Assassin's Creed Mirage collector's case. But while they fight over who gets to keep this one, we've stashed away four more just for this moment because it's finally giveaway time. Write hashtag giveaway right now in the Twitch chat to be entered to win one of four collector's cases. And to find out exactly what you'll be winning, let's check in with Jean-Luc, Shorey, and Lee. Jean-Luc? What do we have in front of us? We do have the Assassin's Creed Mirage collector case. I can't wait to do this. Please. You are the master. <gasps> oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Take that! Wow. Oh, cool. That's a steelbook. It was actually a design that was voted by your community. Fans yeah. have a very good taste. Yeah, it's because just... it was my favorite choice too. This is the deluxe version of the game. Players will also be getting the deluxe pack inspired by the Prince of Persia game, which includes the sand outfit, eagle and mount sand skins, and the hourglass of time, sand sword, and dagger of time. What's next? <clears throat> Selected game soundtrack. It's uh, the music you can hear on the streets from players. So it's traditional Arabic music with traditional instruments. Classic. Classic 9th century music. How authentic. Yeah, so five different tracks of those traditional moments. Next, Assassin's Creed Mirage art book. Art book, yeah. Calligraphy by Atem Arafa. And Atem's done such a great job. They have. Of course, it's one of my favorite parts of the, of the collector's box because it's my team. And this image was made to give the vision to the team. And, and as you can see, they always had it in mind that Roshan would always be judging uh, Basim's uh, <laughs> jumping style. You Roshan is always protecting Basim. You know what? Judging, I mean, protecting, judging, judging. 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 Tomato, tomato. tomato. Yes, tomato, tomato. <laughs> Think on these words and come back better. Ah, oh, map of Baghdad. Map of Baghdad, absolutely. And it's it textured like too. It feels like it's like it's not papyrus, but like yeah, 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 and a piece of yeah, leather. like a piece of leather, like the old days. Get your non-authentic leather map here today. <laughs> Where were you hidden? This uh, is beautiful. It's a brooch. Is that the brooch of That's Basim? Basim's brooch. You know it well. But then I. Basel, you want the pleasure of May I, my lady? Please, the brooch is actually a very important part of Basim's history. So when he was a child at home, his father's an architect, was an architect, and designed the home. When they had to leave, 
Basson took a, what do you call it? A the ceramic tile, right? tile. Like yeah. a ceramic tile from, from his house and turned it into that brooch so he would never forget where he came from and never forget his dad. And wow. I mean, just a detail like that informs the character so much. And perhaps and we do have more. Well, this yes, comes something. with the case. <laughs> something else in it. I'm dying to see this one. All right. No, this yeah. way is better. Pièce de résistance. Oh, wow. Wow. My mom reached out to me when she saw this online and she saw the trailer. She was like, does he, does he look like you? It, it, it does. And they I was like, I don't, I don't know, Mom. I don't know if they changed the design or tweaked it. It's unbelievable. And, and, but there let's, are. Let's the audience decide, but I say 100%. Very much. It looks like you. Oh, yeah. my God, yes. Right? Same, but small. Uncanny. He's, he's waiting for us to say that. Uh, Same head size and everything. Like, it's more handsome, <laughs> incredible. But we're not going to say that. No, but it, <laughs> like, <it's> like, yeah, <laughs> But it is like, I mean, you've got the brooch here, too. Yeah. I love the daggers. Which is what we just saw. The small daggers. Nobody will see that, but <laughs> there is patterns everywhere. Wow. Oh, that's so yeah. cool. So there's like patterns under the ropes yeah. as well. Yeah. There's patterns on the blade. Yes. I don't know if you can see that, but. You have done an amazing job, Ubisoft. Thank you. It's so cool. So nice to meet you, gentlemen. Oh, you're gonna you're yes. leaving? We're leaving. You're, you're, you're gonna okay, walk out. I have to leave now, my Not only does she want the music, <laughs> but, but she wants the figure. Did you really think <laughs> I would do this to you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, everybody, that is your look at the Assassin's Creed Mirage Collector's Case. Folks, we're just moments away from the reveal of live gameplay of Assassin's Creed Mirage. But right now, I'm joined by Sarah and Jean-Luc here in the studio. We're, we're there. We're nearly there. We're right at the finish line. Jean-Luc, what does this moment mean to you? Yeah, it, it seems like uh, the, the end of the story for us and the beginning of the story for everyone. So we, we cannot wait. Seriously, it's, uh, it's a very exciting moment. It feels weird, honestly, but in a good way. I mean... Uh... We have done our work, and now we want people to experience it. So I hope they love it. Jean-Luc, when you look back at your entire time of, of production, do you have a favorite moment that sticks out in your mind? One of them is uh, when we explain to the whole team in Bordeaux and uh, also with uh, our co-developers how exciting it was to it, it is to go to Baghdad and to to rebuild the city because nobody really knew what it was going to be and so I, I had a kind of virtual tour or uh, guiding uh, uh, experience telling everyone if you go there look at that and you you if you go into that place you you must not miss the bazaar or the house of wisdom trying to onboard everyone uh, into the into the journey. Sarah, what was your favorite moment? Well, the first one would be uh, working with the actors, but I think specifically the last recording session with uh, Limash Dub. I think it was a very, very emotional moment too, because um, that was the last line. That was, uh, you know, the end of the process for us, you know, working on that character for so long. So it was a, an intense moment. We cried a bit, like a lot. Uh, and, and it was, yeah, it was a specific moment for us, uh, very full of emotions. And I think there is another moment that I loved. It was the reveal of the first trailer. Yeah, that was an intense moment for us too because it felt real for the first time. Now we can talk about the game. Now the game is out. Now, I mean, it's, it's in the air and people are starting to talk about it. So yeah, another great moment and feeling proud about how um, invested the community was right mm -hmm. from the beginning. Jean-Luc, is there anything you're especially proud of? Yeah, I, I'm proud of the um, feedback we had from the Arabic world. Uh, I grew up uh, on, in Middle East, so um, making this game uh, and uh, showing the golden age of, uh, of, of Baghdad, it, 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 it was just something that I wanted to, because I, I saw um, this world with the eye of a kid, and I came back with just the best of it, just like uh, the light, the people, um, palm trees uh, everywhere. So I, I wanted to to bring that back and uh, in a way to uh, to um, to to share that with uh, with, with others, just like that. So yeah, I, I was so happy to see uh, people from uh, Middle East uh, coming back to us and saying thank you. I'm sure you're gonna get a lot more thank yous too once this game is out. Uh, thank you both so much for joining us. Thank you. And with that, folks, our launch celebration for Assassin's Creed Mirage has come to an end. 
Assassin's Creed Mirage is out so soon on October 5th on PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, Amazon Luna, and PC through the Epic Games Store and the Ubisoft Store. It's also available as part of a Ubisoft Plus subscription. Thank you all so much for watching and stay right where you are because live gameplay of Assassin's Creed Mirage starts right now.